you're going to want to take a T20 Torx bits and take out the screw on both this side and the one over here. So these two screws are located here and here. We're just going to get in here and take these out. So this is the stock headlight knob and I just wanted to show you while it's off of the car kind of how you take it off. You need to get a 90 degree pick or some piece of metal and you just put it down in the slot and you pull down. And so what that's doing is uh, pushing down on this pin and letting it all line up so that you can slide it off of the shaft. Now in order to get uh, this piece off we're just going to pull it straight back. So find some good places to hold on over here and over here and just pull it straight back on you now that these two screws have been removed. Just pull down at the bottom first and break it loose. Just pull straight out. cover here out of the way sorry okay so that bezel just comes out of the way there so in order to give us a little bit more room with the boost line as it plugs into the back of the gauge cluster we're gonna go into the glove box and you're going to push these two tabs inward. There's one on this side, one on the other. As you push both of those together, it will allow you to drop this uh, <coughs> glove box out of the way. And you're going to locate your boost line in here. There's the boost line. Now, it's the yellow line that comes through here. I've already teed into it for one of my other wideband gauges that also has a boost gauge on it. But uh, basically what you want to do is just unplug it, and that'll give you a little bit more uh, slack as you work around it. So we're going to go ahead and unplug it here just by pulling it apart off of this, um, off of the T. Okay, so now... This is the yellow line that goes up back behind the dash. Now, as you go through here, you will periodically find these clips and uh, you will have to undo them in order to actually give yourself the freedom that you need. So basically spread this little V clip area away. So now we're no longer attached here. So coming in back in here, the next clip that you're going to want to undo can be found up in here in this area. So follow that line, this yellow line up in here. So here's another one of these clips. And once again, you're lifting up and you're unraveling it from the orange line. So this is what the clips look like here. You have the orange line going through. And in order to free it, you spread it and pull the orange line up and out. So now we're gonna take our T20 bit and we're gonna go after these uh, four black screws that are on the outsides and that way we'll be able to lift the whole gauge cluster out and work on it on a workbench. There's one there and there and then over on the other side, top and bottom as well. Uh, remember that on the Cobra, the 0304 Cobra with the boost gauge up in the corner, you have a boost vacuum line on the back of that that we're going to need to disconnect. So with those four screws out of the way, the entire instrument gauge cluster can be removed. And we're going to be careful here because we have plugs in the back of it and a boost gauge in the back of it.
So this is the back side of the gauge cluster. And just to kind of show you what it's made up of, you have your connectors here on the sides, and that's what we unplug towards the top, one on each side. Uh, then below it, this is the boost gauge adapter. So that's where the vacuum line goes for that. So now just to show you what it looks like back behind the gauge cluster here, these are our two main connectors that you'll be taking out, and this is the boost line. So uh, they're pretty simple. On this one, you just push this little clip down and pull straight out. And on this side, before you take off this connector, you'll probably want to go for the boost line because uh, it sits underneath it like this as it plugs into the back of the gauge cluster. So it's kind of hard to get to this one uh, without getting the boost line out of the way. So uh, for this one, you just pull straight back on it. It's on there kind of firm, so don't be too afraid. Just pull on it kind of with a little bit of force and you'll be okay. Uh, and then go for this last one and it's the same thing. Just push this tab down and then pull it out. So as you're reaching behind on this side, uh, you can see right behind the boost gauge is where the vacuum line is. And the best way to pull it off is just pull straight back on it. And it's better to take that off first before you go after the other harness because the boost line kind of goes over the harness. So once the uh, boost line's been removed, then go after that last plug. It'll be a lot easier now. Just push down on the tab and pull it out. Okay, once uh, the two plugs have been undone, one on this side, one on this side, and the vacuum line's been pulled straight off, you can then very carefully lift the entire cluster out of the car. So there were a few reasons that I removed the gauge cluster. Uh, one of the things that was really bothering me was some of the dirt that gets trapped in behind here over time. And so I was going to clean that out. And then um, I also have a Hilton boost overlay. And basically what it does is helps your stock boost gauge read a little bit higher since uh, the factory one goes to 10 PSI. And right now I'm at 17 PSI with the Whipple. Uh, they have other ones that go up to uh, 15, 16 pounds, but since I'm already past that, I went for their bigger one, and it's going to read a little bit higher. The only difference is where this gauge rests right now on the needle, I'm going to have to, on the back side of the needle, cut the little stopper so it falls all the way down, and then the new boost overlay will start at zero and go to 10 and 20 and, and onward. So. That's uh, the one that I'm going to be installing today. So the next step in order to remove the lens piece uh, from the rest of the gauge cluster is to go around and disconnect all of these uh, gold colored screws. So this is going to require a T15 Torx bit. And these are in loose enough that you can just take them out by hand. Okay, now the face will just lift right off. We'll probably use a little compressed air to spray inside here and get all that out and clean it up real well. Next, we'll be removing our boost cage needle. And so what you wanna do is go get two forks from your kitchen without your wife knowing and wrap them in electrical tape so that they're soft and won't scratch anything. And then very carefully, we're just gonna put them on both ends of, of the needle, and we're just gonna pull it off using pressure uh, equally on both sides. And don't be prying, because you don't want to uh, leave any marks. Okay, so it popped right off. We're good to go, it didn't break anything. And this is what the needle looks like. And on the back side, there's a little stopper here. And we're actually gonna have to snip this because what this does is as the needle comes down, it catches and keeps the needle from going past zero. So we're gonna break this off and you wanna snip it as close to the base as possible so it doesn't snag and that'll allow the needle to drop. So now we're just gonna snap off this little tab. Uh, it's right here. We'll just get our 
wire cutters. It seems to be the best tool for the job. We're just going to come in here as close to that base as we possibly can get. And here it goes. Okay. So just to fine tune it, these Swiss Army scissors work pretty well. You can get a pair of these handy. Just make sure that it's uh, completely flush so that when you see it, it's not poking out on top of the base here. So just work on that until you get it all the way cut down. So on the left is what it looked like before, and on the right is where we've cut the nub off. So now comes the most tedious part, and this is the boost overlay. And we're just gonna be putting the sticker down, and we want it to cover on a few different places. So now as we go to put the overlay on, we're gonna be lining it up on a few places. Uh, first of all, the zero is gonna turn into a 10, so we know to put one of the lines in front of that to make that a 10. The 10 is gonna turn to an 18, so this horizontal line right here needs to go right in the middle of the 10. And then uh, we wanna make sure that this is going centered over the circular part. So just peel off this part and be very careful as you lower it into place. Uh, you don't wanna get your fingers prints on it and also I went in and washed my hands really well because you will get you know a little bit of dirt and grease on your hands as you do this. Line it up as good as you can with the circle, the 10, and the dash on the 18 as well as that hash mark above the 10. Okay, so once again, that hash mark's lined up. 18 and our 10. So, I think that's pretty good. Looks like it goes over here onto the tachometer just a little bit, so I'm gonna lift that up and trim it. Okay, now the gauge bezel, we'll go ahead and cover the rest of this as we put it back on here. So we're pretty good. Uh, but uh, for some reason, it, a little bit of it did come over onto the, the red line there, so that's now been trimmed off. Okay, so I did have to do a little bit of trimming, as I mentioned, to cut it because it covered the, the red line a little bit here. And also where the needle goes back into place, it looks like it also may come in contact here. So I'm just gonna reach in here with these and just give it a little bit of a, a little tiny cut just to make sure that that doesn't have any problems. Okay, so the decal is all lined up and they say in the instructions, even though it does kind of overlay here and even though it does go over onto the red line, the cluster will cover that up. So if you don't wanna cut it, you don't have to, but I decided I wanted to. Uh, a few tips when you're lining this up. Uh, once again, you want the 10 to line up over here. You want that line right here to go right down the middle for the 18. And if you look here, there's a black hash mark, as they call it. And uh, the stock one goes in the same place. The one on the overlay starts down here, and it goes up uh, about three quarters of the way, and then it, it stops right there. So it's kind of hard to see, but that helps you line it up if you just put the bottom of it of the overlay to line up where the factory one is and let it go all the way to where it ends up here and that's how you know that you have it uh, centered okay so after that uh, the next part is to reattach the needle 
Um, but what you're going to do is put it on back on gently. You don't want to push it all the way down and you want it to kind of sit below the zero. Then as we calibrate the gauge, it's going to, uh, it might be off a little bit, but we're going to line this up with another boost gauge that we have in a pressure system to put it back to 10 PSI. And we may have to take the needle off and, and rearrange it. Now there's no more dust. Okay, so this is how we have it all set up. We have this hand pump that as you pump it, it's supposed to generate uh, vacuum and pressure. And so coming off of the top of here, you want to come off the top of the handle because this is the actual feed side where it will be breathing air in. And as you pump it, this is where it will pump it out. So we have a vacuum line coming up to a T. And so then one of those lines goes to the back of the aftermarket boost gauge that we've purchased temporarily. And then uh, the other end of the T goes back to the back side of the boost gauge, right where we pulled the line off. So theoretically, as you pump this, it should generate enough uh, pressure for you to get a reading. And you want to match up the boost pressure on the aftermarket gauge. And that's how you know where to put your needle on uh, on your stock one. Now this one was giving us a little trouble. So what I had to do is I had to take some compressed air that I had and kind of add it to the feed line like this. And so instead of pumping it by hand, I was just adding more of the air like that. So as you can see, that's how we were able to get this to go up to 10 PSI like that. That's how we were able to get our reading and set our needle. So now we're going to be calibrating the boost sensor. What we're trying to do is match the boost level that shows up on this gauge to be the same as matches up over here on our factory gauge. And then that's how we'll know that it's calibrated. So we're going to take our needle that we've modified on the back and cut off the, the stopper. And we're going to set it down here very gently. We're not going to push it on all the way yet. We're just going to set it on to kind of where zero is. Maybe even a little bit below zero. You just want it firm enough that it's not going to come off. But we don't want it perfect yet because we're not sure where zero is going to be. So now as we pump this handheld pressurizer uh, system, it should pressurize both gauges. Now we've been having a little trouble with this one. We think it's a little underpowered. It's a rental. And so we're going to actually be supplying a little bit of air through the intake of that just to help give it a little bit more power. So now we'll just watch both gauges. Okay, so we'll try to hold this steady and see if we can get a, a reading of 10 PSI. Okay, so we were off by a little ways there, so we're going to take this needle off and move it down. And that's uh, kind of the adjustments that we're going to be making. So just try to keep in mind how much the gauge was off and then set it back down relatively that much. There's, that's it, that's on the money right there, a little higher, 18, okay, 20, 20, 20 on the money, 18 on the money right there. Okay, so now that we're calibrated, we're just going to push this needle all the way down. 
Okay, so we're gonna check it from below and it looks like they're all the same height now. So now with the needle down, we'll test it one more time. Make sure that nothing changed when we did that. So let's go for 10 PSI. Right, a little tricky here. Right there, on the money. Right there? Yep, on the money right there. On the money. Right there? 10, yep. That's 10, let's go to 18. 18, right. That's 18 right there. Right there. Right there? Yep, 18. All right, so we're good to go. So now we'll just unplug all the vacuum hoses. We unplugged it from the gauge that we purchased. We unplugged it from the vacuum tool that we bought. And now just off of the back of the boost gauge itself here. So now we're left with just the cluster. So now everything's ready to be put back together. And it's just reverse order. So now we're just lowering our bezel back into place. And you may need to lift up a little bit on the uh, boost gauge if it's gone past the zero mark enough. I apologize that last video looks like it got deleted for that last clip, but basically what I did is I just put the gauge cluster back up in here and did it reverse order of how we took it out, kind of put it in at an angle with the screen part of it pointing upward and then reached around the back and first plugged in the electrical connector on this side. Then we took the boost gauge and wormed it back up onto its peg and then went over to the other side and plugged it in. Uh, so now for these Torx bits that we're going to be putting on and they go back just where we took them out. There's one there and there and then over on the other side top and bottom as well. So I'm just tightening these down now with the wrench and being very careful. They don't need too much pressure. Now come in and reattach the yellow boost line back underneath the glove box and then uh, reattach the clips, and then just spread it out and put the orange wire back through that loop. Reconnecting the clips is a lot easier than taking it out. You just slide it back on through, just push straight down. Reinstall the glove box by putting these two tabs back together as you lift up. So now I'll just put this trim piece back in and it just goes straight into here. Just line it up and push it straight in. So I've just lined this up and I'm just pushing it straight in until it clicks. Now just take your T20 Torx bit and replace the screw that's on both this side and this side over here. Now I have an aftermarket uh, headlight knob and so it goes on just a little bit differently. You slide it over the post and then you just tighten down that screw with this Allen. So I'll just be replacing that up here. So if you are reinstalling this style, just make sure that the uh, screw portion that comes out will lock down onto one of the flat edges of this triangular bar. So just use the Allen to tighten it. You're good to go.